Hi, this is Bryce at Red Pine Labs. Um, I had recently got interested in FR Sky latency from uh, Thread and GitHub uh, on OpenTX. Um, and you can see it up here. Um, what, what I was especially interested in was Mike Bland had put out a special build of ER Sky that had some fixes to supposedly um, reduce the latency from what OpenTX had. Um, so because of that, I wanted to, wanted to test it, and I ended up getting a pretty involved test setup that um, gave me a lot of good data. And just wanted to walk through my test setup and then um, show you show you the data. If you just want to see see the data, I'll have it linked down below, um, or watch till the end. So here I'll show my uh, test setup. What I started with was fairly simple. It was a switch that would cause the throttle to go to 50, go to 50 percent, and then on the flight controller you would you would see that jump up, and then with the logic analyzer you could measure the um, D shot commands, and you can see that um, over on the screen here. These are all D shot commands that are decoded, and initially what I had to do was flip the, flip the switch and then go and find to where the, the throttle on the D-shot command went up. And here we just passed it. A lot of going back and forth. And then you can see right at this moment it goes from 137 idle to 1403. That's at about 27 milliseconds. So according to that, it took about 27 milliseconds for the switch to flip the throttle to go up, it to get transferred over the air, it to get received, and then it to increase the throttle on one of the motors. And that worked all right, but it was a very manual process of having to dig through that. So what I ended up doing is I um, hooked up this ARB generator to have it do a square wave every second. And I drilled a hole in my Tyrannus and have a little switch that also hooks the logic analyzer. So I, I get um, once a second it'll it'll flip it'll basically flip us flip a switch to go 50% throttle. I'll capture the the value of when it increases and record uh, record the time. And that that is all done in a Python script. And I'll pull it up here. So it, it's a simple little Python script that basically runs the, the Sali logic program, um, which works great. So I can do a whole bunch of samples and get a lot of, get rid of outliers and get a lot of accurate data. So that's my whole test setup. Um, what I had tested is OpenTX versus ERSky for different software running on the Tranus. And then on top of that, I also tested uh, an X4R using SBUS, an X4R using FPort, and then I, ha I also tested a, the SPY receiver, which is a new receiver that's just being used on a couple flight controllers, the Maytech and the Crazy B uh, Tiny Whoop flight controller. And looking at the data here, um, there's a lot of different tabs. So if anyone wants to look through it and, and dig dig through, you're welcome to. Um, so this is kind of the overall summary. Um, I took um, about 500 samples at, of each one. And you can see this red line here. Uh, that's probably typically what most people are using out of the box. Eight, eight channel FR Sky X to an X for R and you get about 24 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds. Um, this graph down here is basically the same data. It's just displayed in a different way. And unfortunately, I, I didn't have the colors match. So you could see it's this um, yellow, yellow one over here. So you can see 23 to about 40 milliseconds and how many, where the samples fell in those bins of the histogram. When I 
kept using SBUS and just dropped ER Sky, um, it went to this blue line here. So that was an easy, like, big gain that happened just for moving to ER Sky. And that and that's 24 milliseconds down to 18, and worst case 40 down to 27. So that's a, I mean, that's a big, big jump. And then I also was surprised that using F-Port, which is a FR Sky um, beta flight newer protocol um, that you can flash your uh, X4R and XSR to support that. Um, it's one wire, uses telemetry and the RC link over one wire. Um, that actually had um, another big, uh, big effect on latency. One comparison is this blue to this orange, that's uh, SBUS to F-Port. Um, it knocked off roughly four milliseconds of latency just with that change of protocol. And then SPY, you can see, is does the absolute best. Um, and that is basically because you're hooked, the, the SPY receiver is hooked directly to the flight controller. And there's no protocol, it's just direct talking to the chip. So that, that's the absolute best. And you gain maybe a millisecond or two with that. And the, the other interesting thing that I saw is with ER Sky, you end up with this nice rectangular looking distributions where um, OpenTX is having more of this long trailing um, blob going out. Um, and to look at it a little closer, um, I'll pull up an example here. So here's ER Sky. This is the latency between the 500 samples, and this is over time. There's a jitter here, and then and that's just the night. This pro protocol is taking nine milliseconds. So just depends on when that the sample is getting getting brought over, when exactly you're going to be. So there's nine seconds is is somewhat, or nine milliseconds is somewhat expected. Um, when you look at OpenTX, you see this more the nine milliseconds, but then on top of that is this varying varying um, signal. And um, I had that explained to me that uh, currently OpenTX isn't necessarily following the heartbeat of the um, XJT uh, transmitter that's that's on there. So what you end up is this varying time that can change over. This is multiple minutes. So this is over four minutes where the latency is slowly increasing, then drops back down. And it, it, it isn't just following that heartbeat. It is, there's also some other improvements that um, Mike Bland did in the ER Sky version that brought this down. Um, he was using, sending um, double rate, and I'm not entirely sure on, on what the mechanism is there. And a couple other improvements with sending stuff uh, as soon as he can after the mixer. So basically what this, what this meant to me is I, was really blown away by the results, and I what I'm what I have already done is I've switched from OpenTX X4R SBus to using ER Sky F port, or I have a couple um, Matec 411 RX um, that use Spy, so I'm keeping it down in this range. And this is probably the um, biggest complaint of why racers have switched to using Crossfire is the latency issue, and I I would like to get a Crossfire set up to be able to test this against, and also Spectrum because they're known um, for having better latency. So that that'll be coming up um, if I can find someone to lend me one. And I think just just increasing this, I can I've already noticed the difference. It's not as dramatic as like the PPM to S bus type feeling. That I mean that was like 90 some milliseconds or to this this value here so that I mean that was a huge jump this is more a little more incremental but I think for racing and flying around every little bit will help hope that was useful if you have any questions shoot them below in the comments thanks for watching